Hey folks, Engineer775 wanting to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, different types of pumps, inexpensive pumps that can save you a lot of time, a lot of labor. And uh, this, this is a little Harbor Freight $89, $90 shallow well jet pump that I have connected to uh, my cistern that's full of spring water. I've got two of these. i got this one here and then I have an elevated one up on the hill. Well, i got three of them actually, but whatever. Um, got tanks and plumbing all over the place and always experimenting with ways and adding backups in case one fails. Um, I'm just, this is my, uh, this is my water system for my gardens that are close to my home. Got a couple of pretty good sized gardens and I'm, I had actually, there's not been a lot of rain the last week so I'm actually watering my garden today. So what I'm doing here, at the same time I'm pumping water onto my garden out of this tank, I'm filling this tank because it's a nice sunny day with my solar pump. So the solar pump's back filling this while this is putting it out on the garden. And again, my solar pump is is a thousand feet away and a hundred feet below us and below this tank. And so that's filling. This is using the water. And I also can at this place. This is a 110, 110 volt pump. I've got think, uh, a box out here wired for 220, so I can do 220 jet pumps, 110 volt jet pumps, and also can hook. I just made these put these two hide hidings out here to make some easy connections to hook it up to uh, some 12 volt pumps. Some of the SureFlow jet pumps, Flow Lights, uh, Harbor Freight makes some very inexpensive, like $25, 12 volt pumps, that you could actually have house pressure and take a shower off of by just hooking it up to a car battery. So this is already plumbed into my house, so I can actually turn a valve and um, just be able to live off of this tank for a period of time. Plus this 1600 gallon tank on the hill. I could live off of these tanks and these types of pumps for you know weeks on end if they weren't being replenished. But I keep them full, I keep using them, and today I'm just watering the garden. So it's important to talk about water conservation. And though I'm just, <laughs> I'm not really conserving today in, the, in that I could be using my soaker hoses, I'm just uh, wanting to run that pump. It's the first time I've really run it. A uh, fellow prepper gave me the pump. I was helping him on a well, and and so uh, I appreciated that. So I'm run, testing it today, and uh, just in my little garden next to the house, I'm um, having to put some water out. So I'm going to dump about 600, 700 gallons of water on this. So it's nice to be able to do that. Um, you can see my, my broccoli and cabbage and lettuce are perking right up. A bunch of different types of lettuce, potatoes, onions, rutabagas, tomatoes. Well, I jump the gun all, every year on tomatoes, and I got bit last night with some frost. I should have covered them, but uh, I always have to do that. That's just the problem I have. Um, anyway, so not the most efficient way to water, but it sure beats a five-gallon bucket or a watering can. And so with a little bit of power, and you could do this all with solar, so you wouldn't have to use any power uh, from the grid to, to do what I'm doing. And I'll do that in, a, in another video. So just water in here. Things are greening up nicely on the farm. And uh, blueberries going to have a good crop, I think. A lot of bee activity. A lot of berries on, the, on these bushes. I call them my berry trees. So yeah, they're coming. They're coming along pretty good. So I'm hoping to get at least 20 gallons in the freezer off of these. Because they really put it out. Um, okay, water. Very important. Always of utmost importance. Just giving you some other things to think about. Backup pumping stations for your gardens or even for your home. Okay. Appreciate any comments. Thanks for watching.